Welcome traders to the first weekly market trade analysis session with me, Patrick Manley for 2023. Uh, I would note today I have a, uh, a hard stop here because we have inflation data coming out in 30 minutes. So today's going to be a bit of a, a, uh, a quick fire session and, uh, and next week we'll, be, uh, we'll expand the opportunity set in terms of the charts we're assessing and uh, and the instruments there. So uh, before we jump into today's setups, let's uh, quickly review the disclaimer. <coughs> Most pertinent to today's discussion is the fact that views and opinions expressed by me in this presentation are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Very quick introduction to myself for those of you here for the first time. Uh, after I graduated from the university, I left with uh, I joined a city PLC consulting firm and ultimately left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500. Well, probably more appropriately at that stage, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. Say that was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is really an understatement. So I had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I uh, really upped my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. Most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-oriented. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process-oriented and have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading simply being a numbers game in which you're playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi strategy approach has delivered a profitable annual return since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition, to my fund management and mentoring. I'm a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Ticknell clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos, which I share through the Ticknell Trading View account. And I'll uh, post a link for that at the end of uh, my presentation. I also run Ticknell's eMini Strategy Facebook group, where I post a daily trade plan, uh, giving my pre-market thoughts for the cash trading session ahead uh, in New York. I give my bias for the day ahead and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have offered close to 6,000 points of profit since we launched the group in April 2021. 
The second tick mill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading uh, to the next level. The tick mill futures telegram trading group is a real time environment where on a, a daily basis, I share uh, in-depth insights, analysis, and real-time trades. I also provide live market commentary during the opening hour of the cash trading session in New York, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the market and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform, helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to ma navigating markets and most importantly, those mental mind games that must be mastered if you're going to make it as a profitable market operator. OK, so that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. We are going to uh, jump into the charts. Um, as always, uh, if you have a question, just drop it into the chat box and I will come back to any questions at the end of my presentation. Equally, if you have an instrument you'd like me to take a look at, if I have time today, I really want to wrap this session up. Uh, within the next 15 to 20 minutes so I can prepare for that CPI release. But I will cover off any instruments uh, you want me to take a look at. If you specify the time frame as well, that's helpful. Uh, equally, if I don't get time to do that today, I'll what I'll do is if, uh, if someone does have specific instrument, I'll uh, I'll record a, a trading view video and that'll be posted to the trading view, the Ticknell trading view site. And I'll give you the uh, a link for that, like I say, at the end of the session. So starting with the S&P 500, I have been long uh, since uh, the holidays, really, and uh, and closed out uh, some positions for uh, for about 100 points of upside earlier this week. I am uh, I'm long again here heading into this uh, CPI release. Ultimately, what I'm looking for, my interim upside objective for this move is up into this 40, uh, 4,040, 4,070 area. From there, I'm going to be looking for some momentum divergence to develop to give us an opportunity for a corrective move to play out. Likely, we retest back into the 3980, 3990 area before extending again to complete a bullish sequence here to the upside. And I'm looking for a move up to 4,100 area as the uh, the primary upside objective for this move. Now, obviously, this comes with a caveat today because we have the CPI release coming out. Now, if CPI comes in softer than expected, I would expect a, a pretty brisk move up to the upside to test into that initial target zone. However, if the CPI comes in hotter than expected, so something close, something above 6.6% on, on an annualized basis, then we could see a pretty dramatic repricing of risk. And I would be anticipating that uh, we could be looking for a sell down back into that 3,900 level on the downside. But from there again, I would anticipate some stabilization uh, to come into the markets. I don't think we will uh, we'll immediately roll over there. But if we do take out that 3,900 on a closing basis, then we'll be looking back into the uh, the 3845 area as the next downside objective. So you have to be cognizant of the market response to the CPI. If we look back uh, over recent releases, so certainly we can think if we go to the daily chart here, um, let's just blow this up, give you a sense of type of scale of move. This was uh, this was our December CPI release. So. We traded from 40.23 up to 41.79, so about 150 points of market re response there. Equally, uh, then we had the October CPI, so 3,500 up to 3,700, so a 200, uh, a 200%, um, uh, sorry, a 200 point move there. And then we had uh, the November CPI, again, 37.50, up to 39.65, so again, 200 points. So if, what, what, what you should be thinking in terms of a potential reaction today, if, and when I talk about a reaction, the market is only likely to really have a significant reaction if we have a print that is either above 6.6 .6 on the upside or is, uh, is below 6.4, 6.3 on the downside, then we can expect these outside reactions. So what you want to factor then is we're currently trading uh, 4,000 on the E-mini S&P 500. So we can think we could trade up 4,150 on a, uh, on a really uh, soft print. That would be a bullish reaction to the upside. To the downside, we could be thinking about 3850 
if it comes in hotter than expected, just going on those three prior months of, uh, of market reaction. So those are, those are some levels, levels to be cognizant of if we come outside of market expectations. If we come in line or slightly softer, uh, then we can expect a, a grind up into that target zone that I mentioned of the, uh, the 40, 50, 40, 70 area. And from there, I'd expect we do then get some consolidation, kind of decent rally here to start the year. So some consolidation before then basing to put in the, uh, the next leg to the upside to target that 41 level. Now, like I say, if we if markets come in, if this if the print comes in hotter than expected um, and we start to meaningfully reprice to the downside, I'm not really going to get too bearish unless we take out this 3700 level on the downside. If we take that level out, then we could be heading uh, heading to the downside in a more meaningful fashion. But for now, above 3,700, I'm still looking for some upside targets to be achieved uh, before we see the next leg uh, to the downside. So moving to the NASDAQ. And again, bullish setup here in the NASDAQ. Let's just put in some targets uh, using the equality objective. So we have this swing low into the swing high. And our current low of 10,761, uh, 10, we are targeting a move to 12,616. So what I'm looking for, what I anticipated is that we could see a pullback. We haven't had that pullback yet in terms of the NASDAQ. But any dips at this stage uh, should be, we should be looking for an opportunity to get in on the long side. Let's just get an interim target here using the four hour quality objective. So I'd be looking for a move now into this um, 11,720. And then from there, I'd be looking for a correction equal in scope and scale to what we saw in the base move here out, uh, out of the lows. So anything up into this 11,750, look for pullbacks then to find support back into 11,360 area. And then from there, we look to engage on the long side. And our target, like I say, is 12,616. So plenty of scope for this to move on the upside in terms of the NASDAQ. Just want to, uh, to my mind anyway, I'll be looking for that uh, corrective move, something similar in scope and scale to this initial pullback. And then we want to engage on the long side, targeting the move up to that 12,616 objective. The YM or the Dow Jones obviously has been the outperformer uh, heading into the back end of last year based on the its, its relative growth, uh, sorry, its relative value weighting in terms of the, uh, the uh, components, the stocks that are in the Dow Jones. So again, what we're looking for here at the moment now, uh, let me just draw in target that I'm using. So uh, any move through, on the daily time frame here, any close through 34,616 sets up initially the monthly projected range resistance, 35,500, and then on to 127 extension of this consolidation period, which gives us an upside objective of 35,878. At this stage, in terms of uh, anticipating any corrective move uh, or deeper corrective move, sorry, what I'd be looking for would be a break back through the 32,800. Let me just blow this chart up actually, guys, so it's easy for you to see. And uh, I'll give you the downside target where we would be looking to uh, re-engage on the long side. So if this uh, if this inflation, inflation print today comes in a little bit hotter than expected, let's get this tool working. We will look for a pullback Bear with me, guys. We will look for a pullback into 31,690. Uh, from there, we also have monthly projected range support and the backside of this trend channel resistance to potentially act as support. So, like I say, if, uh, if we get a a negative surprise here today. We look for this move to develop. And then from there, we'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns to re-engage on the long side, looking for that extension up into our target zone, which initially is going to be into that 35,878 level. Equally, like I say, any close through 34,650, I'd be uh, encouraged then on the long side to again target that 35,878 
as the next upside objective. Moving to the DAX, still seeing some real relative strength in terms of the DAX. Let's just go to the multi-chart view here. So I'm looking for the DAX to test this weekly high volume node now, 15,500. That also coincides with the 200% extension of this consolidation phase. So we're breaking out here. So what I'd be looking for are pullbacks now into anything that tests into the daily and weekly projected range resistance, 161 extension of the consolidation. Any pullback then in a three wave move gets us back into the 14,600 area. I want to be a buyer there looking for that upside extension into our target zone of 15,000. 500. Equally, any move into that 15,500, I would uh, I'd be watching for bearish momentum divergence to set up for uh, for a pullback to develop. But uh, for now, any three-way corrective move back into our 14,680 area, watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. And like I said, we want to target that weekly high volume node just, uh, just about 15,500. And Nikkei... <coughs> So what we're looking at, uh, the Nikkei here, slightly uh, weaker performance relative to the other equity indexes. I'm looking for an equality objective versus this, uh, this current swing structure. Let me just blow up the daily chart so you can get a clearer view of what I'm targeting. So we are looking for versus this move from the highs here into the lows in October. We have an equality objective down at 24,000, just below 24,900. So if we move to the intraday trading time frame and look at the technical setup here, what we can see is we have the potential for a five wave sequence to play out. So we have uh, wave one, two, we've potentially complete, completed a wave three low here, and we've traded into the yearly pivot at 26,500. So I'm looking for any break back through this trend channel support now, 26,200 as an opportunity on the downside. We are targeting 24,890. Let's just scale this chart a little bit. So this is our daily target, 24,890. Now, more, more often than not, the minimum downside objective for that wave five sequence will be a five equals one. So our wave one to the downside from our potential wave four high. So at a minimum, we will be looking for 25,400 if we can break through this trend channel support. And the other target we can use as well for that fifth wave extension, obviously we have our equality objective, 24,890, but we look for a 127 extension, which broadly coincides with that wave one target. So again, thinking about 25,300 there, but noteworthy, we have that 161 extension, which is another regular or, or, or frequent downside objective for a wave five extension to the downside coming in 24,900. So just above our equality objective at 24,800. So those are the downside targets. If we take out the support here back through 26,000, 26,000 on the Nikkei. Moving to the Nifty, as you'll remember from the back end of last year, Nifty has been the stellar outperformer. It's the only uh, index that has made new cycle highs uh, post, the, uh, post the pandemic advance. So what I'm looking for now is an area to re-engage on the long side with the Nifty. Still have a target on the upside versus the swing low at 16,700. We are looking for that 19,000 uh, 19,680 on the weekly. We have that 127 one, extension of this potential wave for consolidation. So again, just so you can start to think in terms of seeing these patterns yourself, that this three-wave corrective move, which to, from a sequence perspective, uh, satisfies a wave four cycle low. And then we're looking for a fifth wave extension up into firstly that 127 extension at uh, 19,500, and then we have that equality objective, 19,680. If we can get through there, then we'll be thinking about that 161 uh, one extension above 20,000 into that 20,695. So we've got some chunky upside objectives to play for in terms of the Nifty. So let's try and see if we can identify potential entry point. Now, one of the uh, methods I use is a symmetry swing calculation. So what I'm anticipating here, is that this last leg of decline before our uh, last five wave sequence, you can clearly see a nice five wave move here. So we have one, two, 
Uh, this is going to be our three, four, and our five. We're now in a corrective phase. So what I've been looking for now, we technically we have a one, two, three, four, and we could get a five here that could complete into that 17,000. 630 level, also weekly projected range support, and we have that high volume node there on the four hour time frame. So we would be, or certainly I'll be watching this test here into that uh, just below the 17,700 level for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for that extension up back through price cycle highs, just below 19,000, and then onto our first target zone of 19,500. So equally, what I would be watching is any break of this uh, current trend channel resistance. So any move back through 18,380, let's say, uh, would be a, a momentum entry to the upside, targeting a retest and break of those price cycle highs. How are we doing for time? 220. Okay, guys, I'm going to uh, I'm going to move this on to quickly look at the dollar. Obviously, whatever when I'm analyzing the dollar, you can basically use this dollar analysis as uh, inversely for the uh, the dollar majors. Obviously, euro, sterling, the Aussie. Kiwi, et cetera, are going to be doing the inverse of what I anticipate is going to happen to the dollar. What I'm looking for today, the potential uh, for today is that we get a downside spike in the dollar into test uh, the 101.90s, 102 level. Uh, I've got the 127 extension of this potential wave for consolidation again, just so you can start to visualize this for yourselves. We have a three wave corrective move, which satisfies potential for a wave four. To the, uh, to the upside wave for correction. And from that wave for high, 102.18 is the 127 extension. So I'm watching for any move in here. Uh, watch for bullish reversal patterns. We've got some potential nice uh, intraday um, momentum divergence here. So if price makes that new low into that 102 handle, into that 102 area, that roughly coincides with the euro testing 108, uh, the uh, sterling probably into 123, uh, the Aussie probably uh, towards the 70 handle. So any move there that, uh, that gets rejected sharply, I will be looking to fade this current set of uh, dollar weakness, looking for at least a three-way corrective move to retest current wave for high, potential wave for high of 105.40s. Uh, if I just pull up the euro quickly, just so you can visualize that, the alternative, so the scenario I'm looking for here in the euro is a spike up into that 108 that gets rejected. We've got some nice momentum divergence developing. And then I'm looking for a corrective move back into 104.50s in terms of the euro quickly here, sterling, uh, similar scenario, I'm not watching for resistance. We've got a cluster here daily, monthly and weekly projected range resistance just coming in above 123. Any rejection from there, we, I would be looking to engage on the short side, looking for a move back down into the 117 handle. Uh, equally, the Aussie quickly into a test of the 70, look for a three-way corrective move back into the potential uh, support here at the 6630s before we start the next leg to the upside. I'll be updating all of these charts, guys, in the coming days once we get the CPI release out of the way. Uh, and Going into this year, I am net-net bearish the dollar, but I think we need to see a correction first before we can meaningfully re-engage and redistribute shorts in the dollar and, uh, and look to buy some of these, uh, these risk currencies in terms of euro sterling and, uh, and the Aussie. I've had a request for silver. I'll give you a quick view on silver. Let's take a look here. Silver is currently getting towards a test of the 25 level. That's the weekly projected uh, trend channel resistance. I would anticipate a pullback from there. So if, uh, if my view on the dollar is correct, that we're going to see a bit of a pullback in terms of the dollar, I'd look for a test up into the 25. Then I'd look for a correction back into uh, support around 2140s before we get the next extension of potential breakout in terms of silver. Uh, silver and gold, I am bullish on this year, but I'm timing my entries and I'm going to be, uh, I'll be updating where I'm looking to get in there in terms of gold. Let's just quickly pull up the chart. Uh, you'll get a sense of what I'm looking at. I'm looking for gold to test up into uh, just above $1,900 before we get a pullback, and then I'll be looking to reload for the next extension. I am anticipating this year that gold will actually make new cycle highs, but again, I'll add further updates and detail to that in next week's session when we can extend, uh, extend the time period here. We're running uh, 225. So guys, I am going to, uh, I'm going to wrap this up here, but uh, for those that are interested in terms of the Telegram or 
uh, Facebook group. You can uh, you can request access to the Facebook group uh, through the link I am posting in the chat now. And I will also post that trading view uh, link uh, with me so you can follow along my updates in terms of those daily trade videos that I post. Uh, here, where are we? Here we go. Thanks, Chris. Happy New Year to you too. Uh, So there's the trading view link. Uh, guys, I'm going to wrap this session up here. I know it's been a bit of a uh, whistle-stop tour today. We'll uh, we'll expand on things next week, but uh, follow along in terms of the daily trades, uh, trade videos that I'll be posting. Certainly there's going to be, I'm anticipating some significant updates coming in the next couple of days as we get this response to the potential CPI prints uh, coming in either hotter or softer than expected. And uh, for those who are interested in the uh, Facebook group, just send a... a, a a request to access there and I'll add you to the group and I'll in there you can receive further details about how you can access the telegram group as well as always traders plan the trade trade the plan and most importantly manage your risk until next week thanks very much